first Sunday of Lent. The observations on Gregorian chant proposed here require one fundamental premise. All of the texts of the five proper chants of the first Sunday of Lent, introit, ritual, tractus, offertory, communion, are taken from Psalm 90, and some verses of this psalm appear repeatedly in the same Mass. Introit invocabit me, et ego exaudiam eum. The gradual Angelis suis, Angelis suis mandavit de te. The great tractus qui habitat in adiutorio altissimi, the great tractus. Offertory, scapulis suis, obumbrabit tibi, Dominus. The communion, scapulis suis, with the same text of, of offertory, scapulis suis, obumbrabit tibi, communion. It is the Sunday of the temptation of Christ. An antiphon of the Divine Office recalls this for us with a clear summary. Ductus est Jesus in deserto, ut tentaretur a diabolo. Jesus was led into the desert to be tempted by the devil. In the Gospel account there is also in particular the moment in which Satan tells Christ to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple and supports his proposal with a citation from the sacred scriptures Angelis suis mandavit de te ut custodian te in omnibus viis tuis he has given orders to his angels and with their hands they will bear you up this is a verse from Psalm 90, which the liturgy has wisely adopted for the chant of the Great Wall that follows the first reading. So even before the proclamation of the Gospel in which the exegesis of the psalm made by the devil is narrated, the Church has already made its own exegesis resound in the chant of the scola and the solist. Not only that, also before the gospel replacing the Alleluia which will not be heard again until the Easter Vigil, comes the singing of the powerful tractus Qui Habitat, the text of which is almost entirely made up of Psalm 90, including the verse chanted just a bit earlier in the gradual. It must be mentioned as an aside that this tractus is one of the longest of the Gregorian repertoire. It lasts about a quarter of an hour and occupies a place that right in the middle of the celebration we perceive as a rather excessive for the current rhythms of the liturgy. The provocation is even more plain because this is not a processional chant, one that is made to accompany movement. The assembly is still seated. It must only listen. The selection of such a long tractus evokes the problem of the duration of the chants, a question that deserves extensive reflection and should be addressed on the basis of the conviction that it is the Church itself that has always taught us the fundamental criteria for approaching the text in view of an acoustic expression of it that is called to become divine worship. The grandiose dimensions of the Tractus together with its compositional complexity, 
bring about precisely a lexio of Psalm 90, mainly achieved through insistence, which is manifested in the strictly musical sphere with the reiteration of compositional modules in a flooded style, an insistence that can also be seen in the frequency with which the same texts are presented at the different liturgical moments. This is the case of verses 4 and 5 of the Psalm, Scapuli Suis Obumbrabi Tibi, which after having been proclaimed in the Tractus are taken up again, in an absolutely identical way, both for the text of the Offertory, Offertory Scapuli Suis, and for the Communio Antiphon, Communio Scapuli Suis Obumbrabi Tibi, with the same text. This does not show a lack of imagination, but rather the use of the fundamental principle of Lectio Divina, according to which one is supposed to ruminate on the text, sounding it in different ways in order to assign it a liturgical setting diversified by style and form. It is the living expression of the desire of the Church to extol and bring forth the many flavors of a single text, to assimilate it, interiorize it. It is precisely this insistence, creating familiarity with them, full adherence to the Word of God, that expresses the spiritual attitude of a ruminatio, the foundation of the process of lectio that is substantiated in an expressive climax, with regard to which the growing intensity of the various moments, from ruminatio to contemplatio, is associated with the progressive complexity of compositional styles. This is the presupposition that the Church through the testimony of Gregorian chant, sets up as the foundation of the duration of the chants. Instead of opting for dubious solutions extraneous to a process of lectio, however brief or lengthy they may be, it would be good to relearn the strict lesson of the Church, which has always taught us and forever from where to begin in order to approach with seriousness and respect the sacred text destined for liturgical chant. So it is not only that he who sings well prays twice, but rather he who prays well sings repeatedly. The idea of Lectio Divina which connects the chanted text of this Sunday, also presupposes and expands another constitutive principle of the Gregorian repertoire, that of relation. The way of forms, which assimilates compositional styles by organizing them in characterized liturgical musical moments, does not exhaust the expressive and the aesthetic nature of Gregorian chant. The form is completed by the formula, a term that signifies every musical entity of variable dimensions founded on the principle of illusion. This is what happens in the introit invocabit me, on the accent of the verb glorificabo, I will glorify him. This melodic rhythmic movement of few notes in reality marks an explicit reference to the canticles of the Easter Vigil. In these canticles the same formula will be heard several times. Gloriose enim, enim, projecit in mare, Mare, mare. 
giving the definitive sign of the Paschal event. The intuit invocabit me that inaugurates the Sundays of Lent therefore presents itself in this its central point, glorificabo, as an elusive moment of great power in which the proclamation of Easter is already contained. Also significant is the fact that the text adopted for this entry is taken from the second part of Psalm 90, which is in fact where, unlike what happens in the other chants of the proper, it is God himself who is speaking in the first person. Invocabit me et ego exaudiam e. He will call upon me and I will hear him. I will set him free and glorify him. I will satisfy him with length of days. And it is precisely on this last verb I will glorify the real and proper expressive summit of the introit that the use of the Pascal formula also makes the melody touch its culminating point. The promise of Easter is already present at the beginning of the Lenten journey, and it is no coincidence that it is sung as in the first intro of Advent at Tel Vavi, in the eighth mode, the last of the Gregorian modes, this to a sign of a promise of final fulfillment.